So we had the Linaro Connect, and uh, who are you? <laughs> Hi, Carbox. Uh, I'm Grant Likely. Uh, I am uh, Senior Director at ARM, and I am, I've been involved with the Linux community for many years. Uh, so, uh, what's the latest that's happening? What are you working on? So, I've been working on a project um, that's called uh, EBBR, or Embedded Base Boot Requirements. Um, and this is a project, it's, um, see, it's the stuff that not most people won't see, but it's uh, with regard to how firmware is set up. And when you take a look at uh, PCs or servers or laptops, uh, they all, they have a standard boot interface. And so that the, the Linux distributions like SUSE and Debian and Red Hat and Fedora uh, are able to rely on that firmware to boot. You put a USB key in and it boots the system, no problem. Um, <clears throat> With the embedded systems, especially like 96 boards or all of the um, uh, Raspberry Pi, similar boards like that, none of them have any firmware interface, the firmware standards. They're all different. Uh, and that makes it really hard for distributions to support. So the, the distributions, um, <laughs> they've been struggling with this problem. They want to support these boards. They're interesting. Uh, but they need, they can't do a separate image for every single board. So EBBR is a set of requirements that takes uh, the software ecosystem, the software that's already running for firmware on these platforms, uh, most of them are running U-Boot, uh, and it uh, adds some standards to that. So it adds, for example, uh, the UEFI ABI. And so UEFI is another specification, it's a standard uh, that's implemented on PCs. Um, and so U-Boot has gained the ability to do, to provide the UE, uh, UEFI ABI, which means that the standard OS install tools, is like if you take a USB stick with a regular Linux distro, uh, a device that's EBBR compliant will be able to boot it. Uh, and that's a big change from the way that most of the embedded platforms are, where you have to go and get a spe special image and do some uh, manipulation or some changing some files on the SD card before you can get it to actually boot. So uh, is it a requirement kind of guidelines that everybody has to follow? It's, uh, uh, it's a, for those who want to follow it, uh, and I think the distributions are going to require it for support. But um, yes, it's a set of requirements that they have to, have to meet. So they have to be, to be EBBR compliant, they have to provide the UEFI ABI at boot time. Uh, they have to provide uh, PSCI for doing uh, CPU control. Um, and uh, they have to provide a device description. So either a device tree or a ACPI description. And the way that we've designed EBBR is we've got another specification in ARM uh, called server base boot requirements. And these are parallel specifications. So the server base boot requirements are very strict of you will use UEFI, you will use ACPI, and it restricts the hardware that's allowed to be used. <clears throat> EBBR opens it up to all the embedded development boards. So that allows us to support those by relaxing some of those requirements, but it still has, it's still usable by the, the distros. And then the other thing that EBBR does is it gives guidance on what to do with embedded hardware. So on a PC, you will have a separate flash device for storing the firmware, and then you'll install the operating system on a EMMC or a disk or something like that. Uh, with an embedded platform, a lot of the time, there's only one flash device, there's only one storage. So if you're storing your firmware and your operating system on the same device, then there needs to be some standards on how that device gets used to make sure that one doesn't overwrite the other. Because if you overwrite the firmware when you update your OS, you don't boot your OS anymore. So uh, it's, it's part of the distribution of the, the image? The, <clears throat> It's not uh, on an the EB chip or anything. An EBBR compliant platform, it could be on the chip. That is an option. Uh, EBBR doesn't say anything about that. Uh, EBR, EBBR has preference for firmware being installed directly on the board so that then you can boot off of USB and then install to an onboard device. Um, you can also prepare an EBBR compliant platform. Like if you've got a Raspberry Pi that boots off of SD, you can put EBBR compliant firmware on the SD that boots the platform and then it will go and load an OS from the same SD, and that's fine. But that's still an advantage because, for um, for example, for Debian, when it updates its kernel, 
it can do kernel updates exactly the same way that it does kernel updates on a PC. It takes the kernel image, it puts it onto the file system, and then it updates the grub configuration file for the new kernel. Well, with an eBBR platform, that all works in exactly the same way. And so the distribution doesn't need to go and manipulate firmware settings to do the normal operations that it would do for upgrading the OS. So is this something that's been uh, in the ideas uh, uh, drawer, or what's it called, for a while? Or is it very new? Uh, it is, we've been working on eBBR for about two years now. Um, so it came up at Lenaro Connects seriously. Uh, let me see if I can remember. Um, year, year and a half ago, actually, I think it was, that it first really came up seriously as we need a specification here. Uh, <clears throat> We drafted a specification internal to ARM, uh, it's called it eBBR, uh, did not get a whole lot of feedback or a whole lot of engagement with it. Um, about this time last year, we decided that um, this wasn't working very well, and so we changed it. So now, <clears throat> eBBR, I mean, it is a specification, it's just a document, but we're doing two things. One, we're developing the document in conjunction with U-Boot. So anything that's in the document is already implemented in U-Boot. It's not something that, there's, there's already all the code that you need to be eBBR compliant is in the upstream project. The other thing that we did is we turned the eBBR document itself into an open source project. So if you go to GitHub, uh, ARM software eBBR, you will find the source files for the, draft, the next draft of the, of the specification. And we accept uh, contributions under Creative Commons by SA license and uh, using a, a developer certificate of origin or DCO process. So it's completely open. Anyone is able to be involved with the specification and develop it so that it's uh, useful for the embedded market. And this not existing earlier, is it one of the this things that kept uh, uh, ARM a little bit back in terms of uh, there was too much it's, fragmentation? Yeah, it's part, of the fragment, it's part of dealing with the fragmentation. Um, and I think you and I have talked previously about uh, the work that I've done on device tree. Uh, this is, more of the same, where device tree has provided a mechanism for doing all the embed boards and describe the boards to the kernel. Um, eBBR now says device tree needs to be provided by firmware so that the operating system doesn't need to know any platform, doesn't need to have pre-knowledge of the platform. So the work you did on device tree is everywhere, is all over the place? Yes. Everybody's using this? Yes. And why is it so great? Why is, I mean, what's, what's so special about device tree? Uh, because it changes from a mindset of you build the kernel for each and every platform to being data driven. And it's just, it's valuable to be able to discover what's running on your hardware. Um, and when you're, there's an awful lot of hard, platform hardware that you just can't detect. You can't, it's, it's not uh, discoverable. So, device tree has been significant because it's a language for things that aren't discoverable. And it's a common language, which means all, every single platform can go and implement, can go write a description of their hardware. Uh, as long as the kernel has device drivers for the hardware, it's able to discover it through device tree and use it. And you may the maintainer of that? I'm not the maintainer anymore. Uh, Rob Herring has taken over maintain, maintainership of device tree. I still own the device tree specification, which is another uh, document that is on GitHub and we're using an open process for the development of the specification. Um, <clears throat> but I don't do any of the engineering work anymore. So you like doing engineering in a, kind of like the, the, the stuff that goes everywhere? What's it called? <laughs> I really did not expect. I did yeah. not intend for it to be as um, as important as it was, I was surprised. I'm still surprised with how many different areas or how many different things people are doing with device tree. Uh, and it is a privilege to be able to be involved with defining a platform and that having impact on a lot of different areas of industry and also not just the industry, but also um, hobbyist or prototype projects that, uh, you know, I, I like the people who are doing crazy things. I like the people who are doing things that no one else has thought of. Um, and the way that I view standards like eBBR and device tree is it lays groundwork. It says, here's some ways to do, here's so that you don't have to worry about the, the, the boring stuff. You can then go off and do the interesting things that you care about. 
but when you create standards, kind of like basic, kind of uh, let's say, uh, 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 most important standards, it has to be so like clean and perfect and stuff, right? Uh, I Is think there, like a lot of design thought that goes so, into that. So so yes, I mean, there's there's a desire for for standards to be um, to be really specific, uh, but it, that can also be a trap because if you're if too much emphasis is put on getting the standard absolutely perfect and covering every single one of the areas, you'll never release anything. Uh, so the the view that I've taken on that is the standards are. I will release. I, you know, I'm interested in releasing a standard when it's useful. If it's a useful document, then it makes sense to release it. And if that document isn't perfect, that's fine, because. That document can always be iterated. It can always be resolved. There is a little bit of engineering on how to choose, how to make good decisions that aren't going to cause problems in the future. But a standard doesn't have to be perfect to be useful. And then if this works out, that means uh, it'll <coughs> enable a, a lot of cool things. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that, that will make ARM much stronger. It will. It will. It'll, it'll make it easier to use ARM platforms uh, in all the places that ARM is being used. So is it ready? There are EBBR, well, okay. So EBBR, there, I've got uh, released a 0.6 uh, pre-release. There's going to be another release in a couple of weeks that uh, has some updates to it, uh, aiming for a final release uh, beginning of December this year. But there's already all the code. So in U-Boot, support for EBBR or what we're doing with eBBR is already there. In fact, a lot of this work to get UEFI into U-Boot has already been in progress. It's already been, a bunch of it's already been done. And this is making sure there's a specification that lines up with that so that there's guidance on how to use that functionality, how to turn it on and be able to uh, have that boot interface. Does that mean we're going to see, thanks to this, we might it might be part of uh, helping us get more on um, laptops, desktops, and all these kinds of things? Um, unlikely on the laptops and desktops. It might. And if it does, I mean, that's, I have no problem. I'm, I'd be thrilled. Um, I think for the laptops, for the form factors that are out there right now, uh, at least the ARM laptops that are used, running Windows, they're all ACPI based, so they're going to be SPSA compliant already. They're already going to have a lot of the things that are talked about here. Um, but who am I to say? I, I don't know. If there's platforms that choose to implement uh, device tree, device description, and they choose to use U-Boot as the firmware, uh, they would be supportable by all the major Linux distros. All right, so it's exciting times and some uh, very times. busy Linux yes. Connect for you, right? Very busy Linux Connect. I always go home tired. <laughs>